Praise God. Hallelujah. We will continue today on our series on the teachings of yesterday on seven reasons um, that could possibly result to unanswered prayer. Now, this is important because everyone wants his or her prayer to be answered. That is the reason why we pray. And we saw in the scripture from where God gave to me to share with you that is in that part of Psalm, the book of Psalm chapter number 65, verse 1 and 2. He said, Oh God, I answer prayer. For oh God, I hear prayer to him. To you shall all flesh come. And so you don't go to God except you want him to answer your prayer. You don't go to him except you know and you are sure that he's able to answer your prayer. Bible said to God that answered prayer and unto him shall all flesh come glory to God. Today we shall be continuing on the subject on the reasons why prayers are unanswered because I know you surely want God to answer your prayer. You go to him because he's all powerful. The Bible said once has he spoken, twice have I heard it, that power belong to God. So he is the one that has the key and the power to answer that prayer. But what could be the reason or what would be the reasons why some of our prayers have not been answered? Glory to God. So today we shall be looking at this third reason or possible factor of why our prayers have not been answered. And one of them again is what I call living with an unforgiving spirit. Now the moment you understand that you can deal with this, the earlier the better for you. But when you live an unforgiving spirit, you are blocking your answers to prayer. You are blocking. God does not live in an environment of unforgiving. The ear of God is death in court to the person that is that has an unforgiving spirit. Now, there's something I think that I need to listen carefully in this regard. I said one of the strategies Satan uses keep you from receiving answers to your prayers is subjecting you to the spirit of unforgiveness. So which means actually when we pray, we also determine if our prayer will be answered by doing the things we need to do and letting go of the things we need to let go. Now living with an unforgiving spirit is one of the strategies, the key that the devil uses to keep us from receiving answers to our prayer. Now, I know you want God to answer your prayer, but you must be able to uh, learn how to forgive, learn how to let go in order to let go. Now, this is the mother of all satanic manipulative spirits that the devil uses. To, uh, to limit us or to stop us from receiving from God. Hallelujah. Now, he stands in the way of believers and can rob us of our heart desire. Unforgiving spirit can rob you of your heart desire. No matter how anointed, no matter how, how you cry, like I told us yesterday, that God do not just respond to our emotions, He responds to His will. And it is the will of God that you forgive. It is the will of God that you learn how to forgive those who have wronged you. The scripture says to err is human. Anyone can err. Anyone could do or anyone could have done something wrong against you. It is important that you forgive. Now Jesus teaching the disciples on the principles of prayer said to them, when you pray, pray in this order, our Father, who art in heaven, give us these days our daily bread, forgive us our trespasses. In the same manner, we forgive those who have trespassed against us. So it is expected of you, even before you come to God, to have forgiven those who might have wronged you, those who might have something against in your heart, those who have sworn by your own life and said, this person has done so, so much bad thing against me, I am not going to let go. I'm not going to forgive this person. It's important that you learn to live with a spirit of forgiveness. It's very, very important. Now look at it. He said, I said something here right now. I said, it can rob you of our heart desire. So Jesus taught us in the, taught the disciples on the principle, 
on the principle of prayer, he instructed them that we should forgive. They should forgive those who have wronged them. Just as the Heavenly Father had forgiven us our trespasses. Now, something happened in the scripture that is very, very important. While Jesus was giving illustration on this subject of forgiveness, he said, if any of you bring a sacrifice to the temple, you've come to the Lord with a sacrifice. He said, and you remember that some, someone, you have an ought that you have something against. He said, do not offer the sacrifice. He said, leave it at the altar. Go and reconcile with the person who you have up against someone you have a, 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 a someone you have a difference against go and reconcile with that person he said then come and offer your sacrifice to god with which also include probably your prayers or your sacrifices whatever it is you have which means if you are to stand before god for any reason learn how to forgive reconcile your differences with people who have wronged you doesn't matter how filled you are with the Holy Ghost, you, you know, how, how, how anointed you are, you pray in tongues, you pray in the Spirit, whatever thing you bring, your own understanding, your own wisdom, do not give room for, uh, do not give room to unforgiveness. Do not give room to unforgiveness. It can make, it can grant the devil access to block your answers to prayer. Sometimes we are so carried away with the message of grace and and, and mercy that we don't even know that it is a spirit of us to also have mercy on those who might have wronged us in a way or the other. Glory to God. So the spirit of unforgiveness is a dangerous spirit. It shrinks the believer's spirit from receiving. It, 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 it blocks away from receiving from the Almighty God. It's important unforgiving spirit unforgiving spirit you cannot afford to live with the spirit of unforgiveness if you are a child of God see no matter how, how how bad our life is no matter how we sin against God God keep forgiving us in Isaiah he said do say come let us reason together do your sin be as red as crimson say I will, I will make it as white as Glory to God. No matter how bad, God even call us, say, come, let's reason together. Let's reason together. So he called, called us to reason together in order for him to forgive us. So it, don't, it doesn't matter who was at, at fault. Either the person you have fought against is at fault or you are the one at fault. Go to the person. It is, see, sometimes it may, it may not be difficult to do, but it's important we learn that these are the principles to receive answer to us. Glory to God. Now, this will lead me to the next one. See, sometimes we underestimate some things that happen in our life. We don't even know that these are the reasons why we have not received what we ask God for. Now, the next one is holding bitterness in your heart. Now, you may say, okay, are they, they look alike, they seem to be the same. Now, unforgiveness give back to bitterness because the person you refuse to forgive, you will be bitter against. We hold so much hatred and bitterness against such a family. Hallelujah. When you hold so much bitterness against such a person. And the spirit of bitterness is a dangerous spirit. It's the spirit of the devil. It's the spirit from the pit of hell. You must not allow it. Say so bitterness is one of the most destructive venom to answer prayer. Now let me show you something here. In Ephesians chapter 4, Paul addresses the choices of he said, let all bitterness and wrath and anger and clamor and evil speaking be put away from you with all malice. You see, he said with let all bitterness and anger. You see, this, this, this element in our heart can cause our prayer to be unanswered. Now, these are bitterness, wrath, anger, clamor and speaking evil and I guess your fellow brother against someone against your neighbor speaking ill they are destructive venoms speaking ill 
bitterness in her heart. They are destructive venoms. Paul said, let go of all bitterness. Let all bitterness and rot and anger and clamor and evil speaking be put away from you with all malice. The, the next verse says, uh, and be ye kind one to another, tender hearted, forgiving one another, even as God for Christ's sake has forgiven you. Now this result back to, to, to living, uh, to forgiving spirit. Let all bitterness go. Let all anger go. Let all strife go. Let all malice go. Let all clamor and evil spirit go. Oh, I love the Lord. Glory to God. Say, let it go. So bitterness is one of the most destructive instrument, weapon the devil used to block the answers to your prayer. You must know this. Now, no matter how holy, religious, or sanctimonious, you are or you may feel if you live in bitterness you have placed a blockage between you and the answers to your prayers no matter how religious you may seem to be no matter how 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 righteous you claim to be if you live in bitterness you have placed a blockade between yourself and answers to your prayer. See, bitterness serves as a barricade, as a barrier to answers to our prayers in life. We cannot, you cannot afford it. You cannot give room to bitterness in your life. Glory to God. So bitterness, bitterness is a disease that needs to be given urgent attention. Bitterness is a disease that you need to give urgent attention to is worse than HIV is worse than any virus you can think of when we come to the spiritual work with God when we come to spiritual work with God this uh, bitterness is destructive bitterness is cancerous it's so destructive it's like a cancer when it eats deep into your heart you may not know it affects you and your fellowship with the Father. And if your fellowship is affected, how can you ever receive anything from me? Glory to God. So, I said it's, it's need to be given urgent attention in the life of a believer who is engrossed with it. It must be given urgent attention. Now you see that? It must be given urgent attention. Now, even um, Paul, while addressing the church, gave us that, that exact admonition that we must let go of any form of bitterness in our heart if we are to receive anything meaningful from God, if we are to receive answer to our prayers. Glory to God. You must let go of bitterness at all costs. You must let go of bitterness at all costs. You must let go of bitterness. No matter what it is, no matter what who have wronged you, you should endeavor to let go of bitterness in your heart. Hallelujah. So you have to let go of anything that had to do with bitterness in your life and smoothing your relation, straighten your relationship with the Father and it is to your advantage. Many of these things I'm telling you today is to your advantage, is to put you ahead of the enemy who don't want you to rejoice or have a testimony of what you are asking God for in life. Glory to God. Now the next one is you must be able to deal with the spirit of selfishness. Now the spirit of selfishness is also very dangerous. See God will not bless you for you, God bless you for the sake of others. Now, sometimes ago, I was ministering in, in the church and I began to illustrate what literally we mean by the word overflow. And David said, the Lord anointed my hair with oil and my cup run over. The purpose of overflow is that when you have enough, you give to others. But if everything you center on is self, self, self. Jesus didn't die for himself. He didn't die because he just wanted to, his name to be exalted above everyone. It was the will of the Father to exalt his name above every other name. That was not what was promised to Jesus for him to come. But having humbled himself and died on the cross, the Bible said, 
he who has been given a name which is above every other name, that the mention of that name, Jesus, every knee should bow and every tongue confess that Jesus is Lord. You must deal with the spirit of self. Deal with selfishness in your life. God bless you for the sake of someone. God give to you for the sake of someone. Even when you pray, don't just center on yourself alone. Also, make sure you carry others along. Have you been blessed with health? Use the health you have to propagate the gospel or to be a blessing to others. You must also let go of selfishness in your life. It is very important. It's very important that you don't live in selfishness. You don't hold all you have. You don't hold everything you have. You must be able to be a cheerful giver. I would say, God love a cheerful giver. Glory to God. Learn how to live a selfless life. Learn how to live your life for humanity. Learn how to live your life for others. Learn how to live your life for the sake of the gospel. The Bible says, he that loveth his life, he loses it. And he that loses his life, we have it. So you must let go of self. Then the next one is lack of honor can hinder your receiving answers to prayer. Honor to the name of the Lord. Honor to your spiritual authority. Honor to your wife. Honor to your husband. Honor to a fellow human being. You must learn to give honor to whom honor is to you. And Jesus said, give to Caesar the one that belongs to Caesar. Give to God the one that belongs to God. Give honor to the name of the Lord. You can't turn the house of God to a, to a place that is not supposed to be turned to. You can't in fact, in fact, you ought to honor your body. You can live your life carelessly. Honor the name of the Lord. Honor the place of worship. Honor the word of God for your life. Lack of honor can also limit the answers to your prayers. Glory to God. And this is also very important. The spirit of iniquity. Now see, iniquity is a dangerous spirit. The Bible said that the eyes of the Lord is blind to iniquity. God will not answer their prayers. Now, before you pray, you can be sure that you have obtained mercy. You must be sure as you pray that you have asked the Lord for mercy, that you have obtained mercy from the Lord. The eyes of the Lord cannot behold iniquity. The eyes of the Lord cannot behold iniquity. You must put yourself from all forms of iniquity and wickedness in order to, uh, to receive answer to your prayers. Make peace with God. Make peace with one another. Make peace with others. And learn to place yourself before the Lord with all humility. Iniquity is dangerous. It limits our answers. It hinders us from receiving answers to our prayers. You get that now? Now, these are the basic things that can, or th these, are the, these are the basic reasons why our prayers many a times are not being answered. It limits us from receiving answers to prayer. It limits us from, from exposing ourselves to, to, to the answers to our prayer. That is why sometimes even when our prayers are answered, we, we do not know about it. Our hearts are blocked. So you must deal with these issues. You must deal with this aspect in your life. Reasons why your answers have not been answered in what I just state to you are within these two days. Listen carefully, church. Listen carefully, brothers and sisters. You want God to answer to your prayers. You want God to give you your heart desire. But I just showed to you today, I just showed to you today how you can receive answer quickly from Finally, you must let go of God. A man came to Jesus and said, I brought my child to your disciples. They couldn't do anything. I brought my child to the disciples, but they couldn't do anything. And Jesus said, do you believe? The man replied to Jesus. And the man answered, I believe, help my unbelief. You must be able to let go of unbelief and step out in faith. Faith in God. Faith in yourself, 
faith in his word faith in his promises hold on to it and you will have answers to your prayer i have experienced this time without number when it looks as if all roads are blocked when it looks as if there's no way out i just let go of that unbelief i just let go now you have you asked yourself why did he bring the child to jesus to the disciples if he do not know the child could be healed you know you just he, he, he probably he brought the child to them well since the matter is not here just try and heal but in down within him there, there was an unbelief there was a spirit of unbelief until the man surrendered his unbelief to jesus he said i believe help my unbelief a lot of people come to church they come to a place of worship they come to even men of god they come to god and pray even they actually prayed in the morning and in down in their heart there is they are still living with unbelief well let me just pray because i have to pray who knows if god may answer this one no 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 you don't come to god in prayer with the spirit in quote can god do it for me can god really answer this can no 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 the word should be god can you come to the you come to God, you come to pray, you, you, you come to talk to him with the mentality of God can. I don't care how bad it is, God can. I, I don't care how, how, how severe the issue is, God can. I, I don't care how the devil have, have robbed me of what I need from God, but I know he can. God can. When you live without spirit, when you, when you live without, when you live without understanding, when you live without on that mentality, you have dealt with unbelief. God can. I don't care how bad the situation is, God can. I don't care how, how severe it is. God can. I believe He can. And God will surely do it. Now I'm going to pray for you, brothers and sisters. Just, I want you to see. Let me just rephrase this. Seven of the reasons why answers are not prayer, or eight of them. Number one, praying the wrong way. I said something yesterday. You don't pray to Jesus, you don't pray to the Holy Ghost. You don't pray to demons, you don't pray to angels, you don't pray to Mary. You pray to God, your Father, Yahweh, and you are guaranteed of answers to prayer. Glory to God. Then, praying outside the will of God can hinder your prayer. Holding bitterness in your heart. Living with unforgiving spirit, hatred and bitterness, malice, speaking evil, speaking ill, can also hinder your prayers, then selfishness, iniquity, lack of honor, and the spirit of unbelief. You must let go of this. I'm going to pray for you right now. If you are ready, I want to surrender everything now to God. We have more time to pray. I'm going to pray for you right now. If you are ready, surrender everything now to God. Surrender all, everything to the Father. Surrender all to God right now. Say, Father, I'm letting go of unbelief. And I'm letting go of bitterness and I'm letting go of that. I'm letting go of that anger and hatred and selfishness. As you do that, I pray for you right now that you are receiving answers to your prayers. What I've taken you 10 years, 10 months, 12 months to receive answers to, seven months to receive answers to, instantaneously, right now, you are receiving answer to them. In the name of Jesus, you are receiving answer to them now. There will be no longer delay in your heart. There will no longer delay to the answers to your prayers. You are receiving swift answers right now to your prayers. You are receiving swift answers right now to the desires of your heart. I pray for you as the man God has sent to you at this time of your life. Receive answer now in the name of Jesus. Glory to God. You are receiving answers right now. You are receiving answers right now. You are receiving answers to your prayers. You are receiving answers to your prayer right now. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Never again, never again, never again. Will you pray and not receive answer? Every yoke of delay is broken to your prayer. Every yoke of delight, every yoke of denial are broken in your life. The yoke of delay is broken. That marriage, that delay, that delay of fruitfulness, that delay of breakthrough, that delay of breaking fall, whatever form of delay is broken in your life today as I speak now in the name of Jesus. Glory to God. Answers belong to you now. You receive answers to your prayer. You receive answers to your miracle. 
you receive answer to that which you are expecting from God. Right now, break forth on every side. 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 In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. God again. God answers. God showed up for you in the name of Jesus. God bless you. I know you have been blessed by this meeting today. I want to kindly support our ministry, support what we are doing in a real ministry by subscribing to our channel and inviting everyone to be part of a little ministry. We hold a service at our place of worship, High Life Chapel, Cameroon Road, Abba, Abia State. We will be glad. I will be glad to receive you. I will be glad to have you with me this coming Sunday. Glory to God. Amen. Now I'm going to be praying for each and every body that may come with a prayer request or special need. Today is the day the Lord has made. Tomorrow is going to be awesome. Tomorrow is going to be an anointing service, a special time in God's presence. This year will not end until you receive answers to your prayers. Glory to God. God bless you. As I love to see you this Sunday service. If you are around Abar, Abia State, Nigeria, come to 67 Cameroon Road. I will be glad to receive you. God bless you. Until I come your way, keep following in the Red Ministry on Facebook, Instagram, or YouTube, especially as we bring the word of God to you with simplicity and power. I love you with the love of God. See, I see you tomorrow. Bye for now.